1650, the Archbishop James Usher, calculating from biblical references, fixed the date of the world's creation to have been in the year 4004 BC. Another dedicated cleric, working independently of the Archbishop, not only corroborated his findings, but with further scriptural proof, pinpointed not only the year, but the exact date and time. 4004 BC, October 23rd at 9 a.m. That was 4004 BC. Meanwhile, a billion years before, give or take a little, Ramapithecus, 14 million to 12 million years ago. Australopithecus, 5.5 million to 2 million years ago. Paranthropus, two million to one million years ago, dead end. Advanced Australopithecus, two million to one million years ago. Homo erectus, 700,000 to 250,000 years ago. Early Homo sapiens, 100,000 years ago. Neanderthal man, 100,000 to 35,000 years ago. Pro Magnon man, 35,000 to 10,000 years ago.
It's done. You're wasting your time. He doesn't know how to read. He'd have to be able to read. I tell you, you're wasting your time. The President of the United States, how could he run the country in the war if he didn't know how to read? Hmm. Listen. Dear President, 25 million years ago, when I was swinging in the jungle, it shrunk. I had to come down out of the trees and adapt to the open grassland where, after considerable hardship and sacrifice, I evolved into man. Now, I know there was a slip-up somewhere, and you were not informed of this, because you now have us back in the jungle. Very astute. I hereby submit that you have designed a war for apes, and as a member of mankind, I am exempt, and hereby tender my resignation hoping that you and your administration can find bigger and better monkeys to fight its wars. I remain Arnie Dickerson. James. President must have got the word. I want you guys down the path about 20 feet. Stay hidden there in the trees until you hear the whistle and move out. And don't head out in open ground until you hear the whistle and move out. <whistles> Think you can get that straight? <whistles> hey, Sarge, can you mail this for me? It's my resignation. Sure. I'll get it off your body. Twenty-five million years, and I'm right back where I started. For those of you wishing to tour the museum, accompanied by an experienced guide, the tour is leaving immediately from the tour guide desk located on the first floor by the main entrance. Our tour is about to begin if you'd like to go with us. No. Shut up. I want to go to a restaurant. When man, the naked ape, finally stood upright, his hands were left free to use weapons. He also had the brain potential to make them. Unlike his ape ancestors, the naked ape's growth to maturity had become a slow growth. Now, the act of learning and hunting wasn't all that made up a hunting ape. He had to have genetic help. Basic biological changes in his nature were necessary. In other words, his personality had to be changed biologically as well as psychologically. So, with the aid of eons of time and natural selection, he remotivated himself from a life of fruit picker of continuous forest snacks to a life of hunter, killer, food preparer, somewhat like the pure carnivores, the cats. <laughs> making each an end in itself. Minute-to-minute -minute snacks were out, and big, spaced-out meals were in. Another behavior pattern he had to remotivate was his system of defecation. It had to be spatially organized due to group consideration. Hey, where's Lee? Sergeant, you came back for my letter. Thank God. Hey, Sergeant. Did you know that your facial and vocal expressions were developed by the hunting ape more than two million years ago? So as he could communicate and cooperate with his fellow man. Will you quit the shit taker soon and tell me where Lee went? Well, where the hell have you been? Having a private carnivore activity. Smart-ass college bastards. Oh, that does it. That really does it, Sergeant. Lee, my letter of resignation, where is it? Oh, I just used it. Please follow the yellow line to Exhibit H. 
We naked apes owe all of our basic sexual qualities to our fruit-picking forest ape ancestors. But these characteristics were drastically modified when we adapted to an open country hunting way of life. The bonding of one male, one female developed. The pair bond, or love, came into being. Lee, I'm gonna write another letter. Dear Mr. President, for millions of years, guys like me have gone off to hunt or to wars, worrying about his woman back home. Then, true love grew into our lives and gave us males assurance our wives wouldn't have thoughts of other guys, but attend his happy heart at home, his unassailable haven from the horny. <laughs> Why is it berries always seem riper on another man's bush? This fear, plus the need to stick around until the kids were grown, is why love was developed. <coughs> why I predict love will prove a much more powerful drive than sex, don't you? I mean, two people won't want anybody else but one another now that we got this pair bond love thing going. I can't imagine anything bigger than that in the picture. Can you? Love is where it's at. The fellas here are swell. We rap about all sorts of things. But underneath, we're of one mind. I wonder what she's doing now, the girl I left behind. Hell, I know that now that I've developed this very strong pair bond with my girl, my mate, having once done this, I should have no concern about her loyalty or fidelity till I return. Except, except, as you may have by now detected, there's a creeping doubt this process was ever really perfected. So there he is, our vertical, hunting, territorial, brainy naked ape. The naked ape is a new experimental departure, and new models frequently have imperfections. For instance, sexually, the naked ape finds himself today in a somewhat confusing situation. Remember in the Middle Ages when they put fig leaves on everything? That's so people wouldn't get horny staring at the statues. <laughs> I can get horny staring at space. <laughs> Let's see. I'll buy these. Got it. I don't need these. I'm gonna buy these. Hey, are you gonna go to your next class? Yeah. I don't know why, I didn't do my assignment. What is it? Ah, uh, it's for English Lit. I need a quotable passage from a major writer. Quotable passage from a major writer? Why don't you fake it? Oh, that's very good, thanks. Probably making change with her toes. <laughs> hey, man, here's a writer with some quotable stuff. That's anthropology, dumb It's in English, isn't it? It's English lit. Keep forgetting. Here, look here. First page. He is proud, Ooh. man, that he has the biggest brain of all the primates, but attempts to conceal the fact that he also has the biggest penis. Come on, Ernie, she can hear you. Referring to accord this honor falsely to the mighty gorilla. It's bigger than a gorilla's. A lot of good it's doing. Yeah, a gorilla probably makes out better. Keep reading, you'll find they don't have nearly as much fun. <laughs> You loud mouth dummy. I told you she could hear you. Okay, okay. Look, look, look. Uh, here. Hey, you didn't pay for that. No, no. You did. Why, you dirty son of a... Golly. <laughs> that was worth 95 cents. Oh, man. Listen to this. 
It could be said that the advance of civilization has not so much molded modern sexual behavior mm -hmm. as that sexual behavior has molded the shape of civilization. I can just see myself getting up and quoting that. I don't even know what it means. It means when we evolved from the sexual fruit picker to the sexual hunter. Fruit picker? Wait a minute. I was never no sexual fruit picker. Are you going to listen to me? Oh, I don't know. Well, listen, it took millions of years for us to evolve into the sexual hunter. And then we think up civilization. And pow, man, in a few thousand years, we become civilized. Now, the point is, there was no time to make the adjustment. Oh, so now I'm a maladjusted sexual fruit picker. No, 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 you are a maladjusted sexual hunter. Look. Don't we have to keep slamming those lids down on our sexual feelings? I mean, if we don't, we're in trouble with society, right? Right. That one I am. I'm a sexual lid slammer. Okay, well, that kind of restraint has got to be learned. I mean, our basic urges don't agree with that. That's because we never had the time to make the proper gene switches. You mean all my basic needs and urges are geared to a few thousand years ago? Twenty-five to thirty thousand years ago. Then all those nights in scout camp, when I was thinking all those things, I wasn't unclean? You and the rest of the beaver troop were merely reacting to the call of the early sexual hunter. Yeah, beaver. Oh, good hit. I think you'd better go retrieve your dart. Yeah. Even maladjusted, it still beats early fruit picking. The popularity of erotic poetry and prose. I imagine you all had a ball finding examples for this assignment. <laughs> you know, in every uptight error, the man with the pen seems not only to let himself be free enough to investigate the myriad pleasures afforded by love, but is allowed by society to get away with it in print. Why? Why, if at the same time, the cultural code forbids it? It is because one poet's vivid and inventive imagination must serve for the many. He is given license, becoming the symbol of the free spirit, the fulfilled man, a luxury not afforded the masses by reason of their desire to abide by the civilized rules. He becomes a man the hang-up generation envies. Now, if instead of reading this pornography, these hang-up people were to act out their fantasies as healthy animals, the traffic in this literature would drop to nothing. The post office department, the League of Decency, various church and veterans organizations would all be grateful because they would be relieved of a busy schedule of vigilance, making themselves more available to do in their secret shame what the poets encourage we all do in open delight. Yeah. Hold it. Hold it, hold it. Wait, wait just a minute. We have forgotten one thing. The law. <laughs> Well, it seems that civilization, in its never-ending attempt to curb our animal nature, has devised certain unnatural act, laws. Now, they even apply, by the way, to 
unnatural acts between a man and his wife. Now, if yours is the normal sex life of the normal American, you could all be arrested. <laughs> Let's get to the examples themselves. We'll start over here and go one after another right around the room. To his mistress gone to bed by John Dunn. Full nakedness, all joys are due to thee. As souls and body, bodies unclothed must be to taste whole joys. Gems which you women use are like Atlanta's ball cast in men's views. That, when a fool's eye lighteth on a gem, his earthly soul might court that, not them. Next, please. Sappho's ode by Catullus. My bosom glowed, the subtle flame ran quick through all my vital frame. On my dim eyes a darkness hung. My ears with hollow... The paraformation stage, usually referred to as courtship, is remarkably prolonged by animal standards, frequently lasting for weeks or even months. As with many other species, it is characterized by tentative, ambivalent behavior involving conflicts between fear, aggression, and sexual attraction. The nervousness and hesitancy are slowly reduced if the mutual sexual signals are strong enough. body postures, and focalizations. <laughs> A courting couple is often referred to as murmuring sweet nothings, and this phase sums up clearly the significance of the tone of voice as opposed to what is being spoken. After the initial stages of visual and vocal display, simple body contacts are made. These usually accompany locomotion, which is considerably increased when the pair are together. occurs both statically and during locomotion. Next, please. Sonnets, Actualities by E.E. E. Cummings. I like my body when it is with your body. It is so quite new a thing. Certain spontaneous outbursts of running. Running? Mm -hmm. Running and chasing. <laughs> chasing? Mm -hmm. Jumping. are commonly seen. <laughs> Where are you going? 
At horizons and it's hard on the brain Sometimes I wonder is it the car or the highway that rolls through the rain This day has no number, this day has no name But it's time for the weekend all the same Why don't you put on your Saturdays too just blind away We could find ourselves a little cafe Where the street people come to play And let the wine and the sun shine Blow our minds away Saturday suit me behind the day Baby, won't you Saturday from the Bible, the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. Because of the Savior of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointments poured forth. Therefore do the virgins love thee. A bundle of myrrh is my wealth, beloved unto me. He shall lie all night betwixt my breasts. Much of this paraformation phase may take place in public, but when it passes over to the pre-copulatory and copulatory phase, privacy is sought, and the subsequent patterns of behavior are performed in isolation from the other members of the species, as far as is possible. Right? Oh, right.
Yeah, we could be arrested. We? It's your fantasy. All right. Did you know monkeys and apes don't fall in love? I keep forgetting. A couple of groups come near it, but people are the only ones who really pair up. Long periods of time, I mean. People don't type monkeys. A primate. A primate. True. I have one and you've had them all. <laughs> couple of facial expressions are grunt and seven seconds later it's over and they're back to separate bananas. Well, if you had to lie flat on your back on a branch, a quickie's about all you could handle. Wrong. She's on all fours. We're the only primates that make face to face. Good idea for a song. The human race makes face to face. <laughs> Idiot. You hate my music. I love it. Oh. It says here the female. Female monkey? Well, she. seem to experience any kind of orgasm. Certainly nothing compared to you. Doesn't seem fair. What's worse, she only gets a little one week in four. One week in four? A little one week in four. And if she's pregnant or nursing, she just sits on it for the duration. It's not fair. Lower mammals don't do that well. Probably why they sleep all winter. <laughs> could work against the monkey survival. She's only got a few days to get fertilized, and she better not spend any of that time being satisfied or she's cutting into her own mating time. Wilt thou have this woman to be thy lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold, for better or worse, for richer or poorer, in sickness... But the male monkey gets his rocks off, right? As long as ye both shall live. Always. Not you, him. I do. Wilt thou have this man to be thy lawfully wedded husband, to have and to hold? The male better. monkey's orgasm satisfies him and gives him time to regenerate more sperm. And in health. I'm regenerating. For as long as ye both shall live. Is your orgasm for regenerating too? Oh. I don't really think so, but in survival, it has other advantages. For instance, it's quite wild, part of the old reward system, a little goodie for pairing off. But mostly, though, it helps assure fertilization. Do you understand? I do. Well, I, I don't. Simple gravity twit. Look, the female monkey gets herself inseminated and then gets up and walks away on all fours like nothing happened. Well, that's fine, because on all fours, the male sperm can stay put. But if your lovely bride here were to get up and head for the refrigerator like the female monkey, two legs and simple gravity lessen her chances of fertilization. So you see, her orgasm keeps her heavenly horizontal for a safe period. Sneaky. Us naked apes are the sexiest primates alive. And always ready. You name it. Down.
dildo by Thomas Nash. He rubbed and pierced her ever to the bone, digging as deep as he could dig for stones. Now high, now low, now striking short and thick, and diving deeper, pierced her to the quick. His body presses against my breasts, my heart throbs. They're still turning each other he on. Me so closely that he what about me? Poor little Show me again. Mr. Rogers? Mr. Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> it's your turn. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I apologize for not having an example of erotic classic literature, but I uh, would like to read something pertaining to attitudes. I mean, uh, to what is biologically natural as opposed to uh, the uh, culturally sinful, as you were saying earlier. Uh, <laughs> the vast bulk of copulation in our species is obviously concerned not with producing offspring, but with cementing the pair bond by providing mutual rewards for sexual partners. The repeated attainment of sexual consummation for a mated pair is clearly then not some kind of sophisticated, decadent outgrowth of modern civilization, but a deep-rooted, biologically based and evolutionary sound tendency of our species. Any body relationship should be grist to our sexual mill, and, and as an inventive species, it should be natural for us to experiment with any postures we like. The, the more the better, in fact, because this will increase the complexity of the sexual act, uh, increase sexual novelty, and prevent sexual boredom between the members of a long-mated pair. Any improvement in sexual rewards for the members of a mated pair will obviously be important in strengthening the pair bond. Desmond Morris, The Naked Ape. Uh, right. If the nightingales could sing like you, they'd sing much sweeter than they do. For you brought a new kind of love to me. I like what you said about sex variations and pair bonding. Oh, thanks. But since we bonded ourselves into overpopulation, isn't it time we got ourselves unstuck? What a new kind of love to me. How about a law that a person can only reproduce himself? You know, one for one. Of course, they'd have to enforce it. You mean with a fine? I mean with scissors. And I am only a man. I would work and slave the whole day through. What the world needs now, so I could hurry home to you, is a bucket of cold water. Have you brought a new kind of love to me?
Sandra, come on. The lady said follow the yellow line. It's not moving. It took us millions of years to evolve into the sexual hunter. And then we think up civilization. And how? In a few thousand years, we become civilized. The point is, there was no time to make the adjustment.
Miss Hemmings, am I supposed to do something important at this time? Miss Hemmings? Kathleen, Kathy, Miss Hemmings took a, or I think, left for... Who cares? <laughs> Jelly beans. Uh, the bag broke. You're new. Yes, I was just assigned to you today. I decided to stop being a housewife. My husband's away, so I got out and joined the workforce. Oh, uh, right. You're a dirty old man. Yes, but I'm a healthy, dirty old man. The whole world's geared to staring at each other's goodies. Voyeurism is a healthy, non-participating sex activity. The world should stare at the world. Did my wife call? Oh, yes, she's meeting you downstairs. I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. It's just that we're going to the country. It took us two million years to get out of the trees. And the rush hour could take another two million to get back here. Specialized, organized. Night, Carl. When are we going to realize Homo sapiens is facing his demise? See you Monday, Stanley. How you gonna keep him up in the city's old memory? Ted, that's not your hat. Stabilize. Good night, Bob. But don't forget how to... You really blew their minds at that meeting today. Improvise. Look what's happened to the eagle and whale. What you gonna do when your systems fail? How will we synthesize a new atmosphere? How will we minimize the effects of fear? And can we justify what we're doing here with the end so near? Tune in next week, tune in next week. Oh, we'll be revealed, oh, analyzed, theorized. Of all God's creatures, we're certainly the wise guys. And when we're all pressurized, and when we're all normalized, and when we're all sanitized, we're still gorillas. What you gonna do when you're me? During the week, the naked ape rushes to cover the earth with steel and concrete, only to spend his weekend rushing to find what remains of nature. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's follow the yellow line to the next exhibit. There we will see displayed the result of man's greatest survival trick, his exploratory inventive urge. mental and physical dexterity have enabled him to improve upon nature. The same hands that once grasped the branches of trees have since created the treasures of this earth. Our 
ancestral grunts and squeaks have become language and symbols to further aid our unlimited creative ability. are truly the most exquisite on earth.
It is one of the ironies of nature that the naked ape, while perfecting his greatest survival trick, his inventive exploratory urge, has managed to bring himself into conflict with an older, more primitive survival trick, his aggressive urge. All right, let's go. All right, let's move. Come on, move it out. Let's go. Come on, let's go here. Form a line right over there. Come on, hey, come on, move it out. His superior mentality has evolved a species defect, one that could cause him to exterminate himself by the end of the century. We animals fight amongst ourselves for one of two very good reasons, either to establish dominance in a class system. Get back in line! Or to establish territorial rights over a particular piece of ground. Arnold Dickerson! Here, I'm here. I'm here. You're late for the war. But don't worry, there'll be another one along any minute. <clears throat> All right, now follow the yellow line in the building. Let's go. Move! There is a rigidly established class system in most species of monkeys and apes. All right, hold it right here. Stop. With the dominant male in charge of the group, others range below him in varying degrees of subordination and envy. So when the boss becomes too old to remain top ape, he is overthrown by a younger male who then inherits the control and envy of the colony. Also, in most species of monkeys and apes, the responsibility of protecting the territory and the colony falls to the dominant male, who will lay his life on the line in order to protect his colony. The naked ape has reversed this procedure, it falling instead to the lesser males to defend not only the territory, but the colony boss, who in return will spare no amount of technology in laying their lives on the line. I-O-N. A-G-G. 
G-R-E-S-S-I-O-N. I, um, would like it to go on record that I conscientiously object to war. I believe in, uh, total appeasement. What would you do if a vicious enemy suddenly started coming at you, armed to the teeth and ready to kill you? Um, a vicious, uh, enemy armed to the teeth, ready to kill me? First thing I'd do is throw down my weapon. Then I'd uh, show him my hands so that he could see that there wasn't anything in them. Then I would salute so that he would see that uh, my hands were flat out in the open and know that I wasn't making a fist. And if that didn't work, I'd, uh, I'd take off my hat. Yeah, I'd definitely take off my hat and make myself very small, as small as I could get. See, I wouldn't want to seem taller than he was. That's why I'd take off my hat. Hmm. Uh, I'd lower my head. I'd lower my body. I'd have to be good and submissive. Yeah. Um, so is, uh, bowing. I think he'd understand a bow. Or, uh, maybe a curtsy? Uh, no, no, uh, definitely a bow. Ah! That's it, I'd try some baby talk. That shows that I don't mean a lot of harm. <laughs> Lots of people talk baby talk. Perhaps if I offered him a chocolate bar. <laughs> and if he didn't like chocolate, I'd show him a few insecurity gestures to make him think that I was totally incapable. Birds do things like that. Um, religion is very appeasing, if you know the right, uh, lousy religion. Oh, I think I would smile and, uh, and laugh, and <laughs> I think I would laugh a lot. I think I would laugh until I started to cry and fall down prostrate on the ground and, and grovel at his feet. <laughs> Sounds sensible. A modicum of caution is required in every soldier. Uh, but, uh... In most disputes, 
The basic aggressive threat signals are strong enough to put a stop to the dispute without the contestants coming to blows. Then everybody uses appeasement signals. You have nothing to worry about. But we're not using spears anymore. Weapons have become highly impersonal. They're developed to be fired fantastic distances. How the hell's the enemy gonna see my appeasement signals? Look, it's a fair fight. You won't be able to see his either. How'd you make out? Forget it. What do I tell him? Tell him you like boys. I think I should tell you. I like boys. Then you'll probably like the army. In the Ambrona Valley of Spain, two excavations revealed a prehistoric fossil story about a band of Homo erectus believed to have hunted here over 500,000 years ago. Most of the tools found in the valley were made of alien stone, which means that they were carried here in anticipation of the hunt. These early hunters had some understanding of place and season and could visualize events in the future. They knew that the migratory grazing animals would be moving south through such natural funnels as the Ambrona Valley, migrating to the warmer lowlands where they grazed for winter. The basic patterns of behavior developed by us in these early days as hunting apes still shine through all our affairs today no matter how lofty we make them appear. The basic aggressive urge of the hunt has never changed, only its form.
What a piece of work is man. How noble in reason. How infinite in faculty. In form and moving, how express and admirable. In action, how like an angel. In apprehension, how like a god. The beauty of the world, the paragon of animals.